I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about history bounding with a special focus on history bounding for plus sizes. So to start off, for those that may not be familiar, what is history bounding? In its basic form, history bounding is dressing in a way that pulls from an era of history or represents an era of history, but isn't actually a full historical costume. The name was coined by Morgan Donner a couple of years ago and plays on the trend of Disney bounding or dressing to represent characters or other facets of the world of Disney. In this video, I want to cover several different topics involved with history bounding. These are first, how does history bounding differ from historical costuming? Second, where to source pieces to use in your history bounding? And third, what elements make up a history bounding outfit? History bounding is not the same as historical costuming, but they can share much of the same wardrobe. The big difference is with history bounding, you are mixing and matching different eras. Maybe you're combining modern with medieval, or maybe it's 1950s meets Edwardian, or maybe it's all of those all rolled together. The neat thing about history bounding is that you can really pick and choose your favorite elements from any period in history and combine them all together. Now, generally speaking, I would consider anything historical if it's pre-1920s and anything vintage if it's 1920s through 1980s. And in my opinion, if it's any newer than that, it's kind of just a mixture of like modern or dated. My personal wardrobe definitely tends towards the vintage inspired more often than the historical side, as I love the silhouettes of the 1950s. However, I've realized recently that my ultimate aesthetic is probably Disney Main Street trolley dancer with a touch of cottage core and also plaid. <laughs> Basically, this mixes the 1950s with the early 1900s and a bit of modern pastel whimsy and also plaid because I live in the Pacific Northwest, I guess. I haven't been able to fully assemble this wardrobe yet, but I have acquired many pieces that fit this bill. I'll go more over individual pieces later in this video, but in general, since my aim for history bounding is almost always Victorian or Edwardian instead of something like medieval or Regency, the styles that I will be referencing in this video will also tend to be more Victorian or Edwardian. First though, especially for people who are plus size, Let's talk about where or how you can build a history bounding wardrobe. Really, there are three sources for history bounding pieces. Fast fashion, or new pieces in general, thrifted or secondhand, including potentially vintage pieces, or just making it yourself. Finding new pieces can be easy, though it's definitely a lot more difficult if you're plus sized. For example, Forever 21 and H&M seem to often carry pieces that would work super well for history bounding the turn of the century, such as blouses with ruffles and pin tucks or lace or ones with big sleeves and high collars or all of the above. But these stores don't feel the need to cater to the majority of women out there, instead preferring to only carry clothes for people who fit their ideal clientele aesthetic. But Let's face it, a rant about sizes practices like that would be its own separate video. Even The Gap, who put out that blouse that every costumer and their mother bought last year, is pretty darn sizist, which is honestly weird to me since they're owned by the same company as Old Navy, which is one of the most size inclusive companies I know of, but whatever. I snagged one of those Gap blouses last year, but it has lived in my mending pile this whole time because while the body of the extra large fit, the too short length of the sleeves made the cuffs hit my forearm instead of my wrist and they don't fit around my forearm. And I'm pretty sure that was the largest size that they carried anyway. So I don't know, I really should fix that and actually incorporate it into my wardrobe, but it's annoying to have to do that. Anyway, so that leaves us with size inclusive places like Target, Old Navy, eShakti, and maybe a few others. Unfortunately, I've never really seen any history bounding appropriate pieces at stores that are actually for plus size women like Torrid or Lane Bryant. Target though has famously embraced history bounding for all sizes, like with the Pioneer dresses they released last year. 
I'm still a little bummed that I missed out on buying one of those, but a few of my other favorite history bounding and vintage style blouses did come from Target last year, and my new gingham dress that I've worn in a couple of videos was one of this year's finds. I do find with Target that the quality can be really hit or miss, and the sizes vary based on the designer. Also, while they make clothes for plus size bodies, they don't seem to know how to actually fit plus size bodies. I would consider myself pretty easy to fit other than my height because I have a very hourglass shape. But with almost all of the pieces I've gotten from Target, I've had to take the tops in quite a lot and have returned several for being too small through the hips. Old Navy was great for history bounding before history bounding was a thing. Back in 2012, they went on a huge Edwardian and Victorian kick with lots of lightweight white cottons decorated with tucks and lace and a couple of which I actually use in my historical costuming wardrobe as well. Unfortunately though, I haven't seen anything like that from them recently. Eshakti is well known for being a great clothing resource for people of all sizes and for having really fantastic vintage styles, but they have blouses, dresses, and skirts that would also make perfect history bounding pieces. And with the ability to do custom sizes or different colors or sleeves on a piece, there is even more opportunity to get pieces exactly how you want them. I haven't ordered any history bounding pieces from them yet, but I am super tempted to do that. If you know of other ready-made clothing companies with plus size history bounding styles, please do let me know in the comments. The next option for procuring great pieces is through shopping secondhand, whether that's at thrift stores, vintage stores, your grandma's closet, etc. Honestly, the majority of my wardrobe is thrifted. It's great for my wallet and reusing clothing helps the environment. Plus, you're often able to find older pieces that may be from when historical stuff was in style, like puffed sleeves and pin tucks from the 80s or ruffles and lace from the 70s plus a wide variety of skirts and even accessories. Thrift stores can also be a great place for fabrics or things that can be used as fabrics, such as tablecloths or curtains, if you decide to go the third route, which is making it yourself. The nice thing about making pieces yourself is that you can make it just how you want it. Do you want a Victorian looking blouse but don't like high collars? Do you want an 1890s walking skirt shape that hits you mid calf? Maybe you want some bicycle trousers, but in a rainbow tweed. All totally possible when you make it yourself. I am currently in the process of making a history bounding jumper dress inspired by the 1840s, the 1900s, and the 1950s, which I will be showing you in an upcoming vlog. I took all of the elements I liked from all those particular eras, mixed them in with cottagecore vibes and a springtime color scheme, and just went for it. When you're making it yourself, opportunities are endless. So let's talk about what elements make up a history bounding outfit. Since my ideal history bounding aesthetic is generally trolley dancer vibes, I find that it's fairly easy to mix and match existing pieces from my wardrobe to get me headed on the right track. For example, I can take a plaid pleated calf length skirt, like one of the several that I made last year, and pair it with my Victorianish blouse from Target. If I want to go a little further, I could add a waist cincher belt or a sash that ties in the back with a big bow and some Victorian boots like my Tavistocks from American Duchess. If I wanted to take it even farther, I could even add a hat, but personally, I never do. To me, hats are somehow the piece that takes it from history bounding to costume. I think it's because no one ever really wears hats anymore, other than winter hats or sun hats on the beach. And so if you see someone just casually walking down the street in a hat, it turns into a question of like, hmm, I wonder what they're all dressed up for. That's just a personal preference, of course. If you want to wear hats with your history bounding looks, go for it. But basically, overall, you're looking at the shapes, textures, and decorations of the main garment pieces plus how you can use accessories to further tell your historical story. So if you're going for the early 1900s, you'll want a skirt that hits somewhere below your knee, the length is totally up to you, with some fullness and body, probably with a petticoat of some sort underneath to help with the shape. Then you'll want some sort of blouse that can help to represent a shirtwaist. 
This could be anything as simple as a plain button up white blouse to something that was clearly inspired by the era, like last year's Gap blouse or this blouse from Target with high collars, slightly puffed sleeves, tucks and insertion lace, etc. Naturally, your blouse would be tucked into your skirt and you might want to add some sort of a belt, sash, waist cincher, or even a little waistcoat. Ideally, you would also add tights or stockings and some sort of an ankle boot. For accessories, maybe a lovely cameo brooch right at the neck and some simple pearl earrings. This would also be an awesome time to wear a chatelaine or a pocket watch if you have one. If you want to add historical hair, you could put your hair up and tease the front for a little volume and add a hat if you wish. And there you have it. Perfect turn of the century history bounding outfit. To me, there are certain elements that tend to remain modern when I do my history bounding, including headwear. My hair and makeup also are usually modern. I prefer modern makeup and I usually just do my hair in this half up, half down style every day with a little teasing in the front because I'm lazy and because I don't like wearing my hair up. I never wear corsets for history bounding because frankly, that would just be too much effort. What shoes I wear tends to vary depending on what activities I'm doing. I used to wear my Tavis socks a lot when going out in a history bounding outfit, though to be honest, I think this was actually before history bounding was actually a thing, at least in the name. But now pretty much the only reason I go out is to walk my dog and I need something that will remain comfortable for two miles of walking. <laughs> so in the winter, I tend to wear low heeled ankle boots, which do look a little Victorian. And in the summer, I wear flats or low heel walking shoes. Overall, comfort is more important than style when it comes to footwear or corsetry. Anyway, I hope this video was interesting and helpful for any of you who have been considering incorporating history bounding styles into your wardrobe. Do you history bound already? And if so, what eras and styles do you like to do? Please let me know in the comments. If you liked this video, please be sure to click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs on Tuesdays and other costuming content like this out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi accounts down below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Heidi, Mia Q, and Sharon. Once again, thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!